Hello ladies and gentlemen, fans and followers, this is Westbound for Westbound Music. Hope you all had a pleasant Sunday afternoon and evening. And uh, I wanted to share with you a quick glance at Orchestral Essentials Package 1 in the version 2.0. They updated it recently. And here's the cool thing. There is a sale going on over at Native Instruments. Apparently Project Sam partnered up with Native Instruments for as far as distribution and sales are concerned. There's a sale going on until the 6th of April and you want to take advantage of each of the packages which usually runs at $149 euros wherever you are. Um, comes at half the price and uh, well almost half the price 60% and if you uh, previously owned and registered Project Sam's Free Orchestra 2.0 through Native Access you get a further discount which is like half the price so basically all you have to do is head over to Project Sam download the Free Orchestra install it register through Native Access have it in your cloud then go to the purchase and you get half the price for each of the packages which is phenomenal so you want to take advantage of that okay before i babble too much um let's take a look at the project here in uh, logic and uh, hang on i gotta yeah multitasking i used to be much better with that okay <laughs> you're gonna have to bear with me okay so here's the interface for orchestra essentials one um you see in the left section here uh the multis as they're called which are preloaded versions of um orchestral instrument sections and we get to listen to them well I should also mention here what I'm doing is I'm looking at it through uh, complete control which is uh, their standard uh, for if you happen to have one of those well let's show them here if you happen to have one of those um, keyboards controller keyboards the S type keyboards uh, S 4961 or even the large one like here um, there's two versions this is the older one the mark one the, the second one is even cooler has a, a display and a mixer built in so that's really cool but the, the cool thing still is even for the older version that uh, it supports nks which means that functions in the software are mapped to those knobs and controls here on the keyboard and also the control functions like play stop record cycle and so on they all through work through uh pushing the buttons here on on the master keyboard instead of you know fumbling with the mouse all the time <laughs> so uh, i think this is very very convenient and makes for a great uh, productive workflow okay and th this is uh what we're looking at because usually you uh, load it in contact uh, you think i think you need contact 6.7 something at least for orchestral essentials 2 i think you need contact player 7 but the, s the player is sufficient um, and also, like I said, if you have complete control and it supports the NKS standard, which is super cool and super convenient. All right. Okay. So this is the interface. Um, and also another cool feature of NKS is uh, you get to have these uh, auditioning previews, like you step through them and you hear what's, what's going to load before it loads. <laughs> So expressive and rich. Full arrangements, you don't even have to play anymore. <laughs> So these are the multis, which are, as you can hear, really expressive uh, combinations of instrument sections fully recorded in a professional uh, audio environment and by professional engineers. And uh, you get to have this type of quality at this smaller price. I, I think that's unbeatable. There are um, other libraries which come at a good price point. Even the free orchestra was phenomenal. I scored a, almost the entire uh, Score Leaf 
2022 using uh, the free orchestra. Not only, but but largely that, and it was a it saved my day. You know, it it was a lifesaver. And now orchestral essentials. And as the, the naming says, uh, it's like your Swiss army knife of orchestral recording and also articulations. And we're going to look at them now. So what I did is I loaded, uh, I think it was Battle of the Giants, the multi, into this um, interface here. But cleared out uh, some of the additional instruments that... Uh, I didn't want to use for this presentation. We're just going to focus on strings and brass, which are the most common for any type of music. And in order to get to the, you know, uh, bits and pieces to the to look under the hood, you need to click the lock icon here down below, and then wow, ba ba, <laughs> being presented with a full enchilada. So okay, uh, where do the instruments actually come from? How do I load them other than through the multis? You can also load them some, uh, individually by pressing the menu item on library and then you are you switch over to instruments and you get the single instrument either single instrument or sing, uh, instrument sections usually it's sections here in this case and also you see some additional icons here like for example for uh, violins and flutes um, strings and, and, and parts of the woodwinds you get uh, legato real legato articulations and another thing is uh, which is cool for timpani or any kind of percussion is uh, adaptive sync for things like um, crescendo rolls and, and and stuff like that you get to sync them to the beat you get to select the number of beats and they sync to the tempo set uh, that you set for for your pro project okay so now the grayed out sections here string and brass are the ones that we have loaded into our mixer section down below. You have 10 free slots and believe you me, you're not going to run out of slots anytime soon because these, even the single instrument sections are so expressive and rich in uh, articulations. I can't imagine how you would need anything more than, than 10 here for one, uh, for one track, mind you. You know, you get to have 10 for each track, so... <laughs> You know, the sky's the limit. Okay, uh, strings, Arco, of course. So that's your regular um, long string, staccato. And they're all mapped to the mod wheel, which is uh, in the section here on to the left on the keyboards. Uh, this is not ideal with, uh, you know, multi-blended here, but in order for you to, to see both, uh, that's the best I could come up with. So if I operate this ribbon here, I hope you can see that. Let's just see that. Also these uh, um, multicolored light indicators above the keys uh, denote the range in which you will hear something and the red ones here to the to your left, to my right, are the switch key uh, key switches. We're gonna talk about them in a second. Here we go. All right, um, staccato for the strings, tremolo. I think you can hear that, like like a tremolo effect from the bow. Okay, that's straightforward. But here, this is cool effects. I mean, listen to that. <laughs> Let's just mute the brass for a minute. Amazing. Can you imagine how long it would take you to program this using any other high tier library? I mean, it's just phenomenal. So expressive and pre-recorded right at your fingertips to, you know, to use right away. All right, um, let's mute the strings and head over to the brass, clicking on the brass tab here. Again, mod wheel. Come on. Ah, I know what's happening. I pre-selected, yeah, I have set the velocity for the brass to set in only after, you know, with a certain velocity in order to have them layered uh, with the strings because I had them preloaded and pre-configured before this presentation. So you get to do that too. For the strings, for example, they 
uh, support the full range of velocity, the brass only if you hit it harder. You will hear the brass, that's why I didn't hear any. So you have to hit it harder, but let's bring this down for the presentation. And then mod wheel, of course. Uh, in the performance section here. And also the sound changes, like real brass section. You know, if they uh, play it harder, the, the sound, the timbre of uh, the instrument changes. And they reflected this really, really accurately here. Staccato. Oops, that was the pitch band. Staccato. This is cool, muted staccato. which is different from a regular staccato, you can hear that. And again, the, the effects section here is just phenomenal. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? It would take you forever to program that, uh, you know, uh, manually. So, okay, um, so both together, um, you of course, you could, you know, set the, the volume differently for the brass, lower and the strings, you know, they are at, set at equal volume at the moment. But uh, let's focus on the key switches once more and go back to the strings. Um, the, here the screen little number indicates the key switches and, and they are reflected on the on the keyboard on the controller by those red um, illuminated uh, indicators here are these these keys in the upper range of the instrument and that's why you would want to place key switches so that you don't have a sound sounding when you press the key switch okay let's try them out bring back the interface I'm sorry um. then C sharp 6 D6 is tremolo D sharp 6 is pizzicato and E6 is the cool string effects I should be able to hear the bass here. All right, so these respond to the key switches, uh, C through, what is it, E. And then for the brass section, they respond to anything above F, like for the regular. Sorry, I have to... Yeah, it's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. <laughs> All right, back to the brass. Then uh, F sharp should be staccato. Um, G is muted staccato. G sharp is effects. Wow. So they respond to key switches, or like I said, you could uh, make them respond to something else like velocity ranges and stuff like that. Or what you also could do is just change the range of the instrument so that the brass would be in the lower section, for example, and the strings in the higher section. Round robin is, what is round robin? I forget, so let's take a look. Press the question mark here and uh, go through these elements until we come to round robin enable the disable round robin. cycling for the selected instrument cycling is the automatic alternating between different samples when repeating a note for increased realism meaning to say that what I indicated earlier uh, when you operate the mod wheel the sound of the sample actually changes and round robin does a similar thing so uh, that's that okay um, Expression control, like I said, usually it's pre-mapped to modulation wheel, which is controller, MIDI CC controller number one. But of course you can set it to anything you wish. Um, you could also, you know, map it to any of these knobs here on the keyboard, but they're pre-mapped 
and so they're already um, occupied and used by by the software already so I'm leaving it, uh, I'm gonna leave it at that um, okay what else did I want to share with you I think it was the timpani and the depth of sync well let's uh, let's clear this out here for a minute and just use any of the legatos for example violins and flutes I think you can hear that as I play the different notes that the attack for each instrument uh, instrument doesn't set in as I switch the keys or change keys but is a software softer transition from one note to the other and that's what they got us off for and they usually you you'd have to shell out much more money to get those so this is really another cool feature uh, what else let's check out uh, Oh yeah, like I said, the timpani with uh, adaptive sync, that's important. So you have hit or crescendi, and this is where adaptive sync matters. So now it's uh, set to downbeat. You could uh, click this here and set it to, let's say, three beats and they are also uh, responding or correspond to the tempo that you set for your project so they sync up with that okay three beats but let's keep it to downbeat um, dynamics again pre-mapped to the mod wheel you can also use both articulations if you shift click them both See, so you have the hit first and then also an additional uh, crescendo roll. I think that's really cool, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's so much fun. You, you... This is so useful, you know, it usually takes forever to, to really tweak these things to match your, your cue and, and your downbeat. And they thought of all that and offer it here at an unbeatable price. Okay, um, I think that was basically what I wanted to share with you. Let's check out whether I forgot something. Um, yeah, well, oh yeah, um, let's bring up the thing from before once more. Let's say you have... Uh, course you you get to add your own instruments and do your own setups here um, if you save them unfortunately they won't appear here but it's snapshot so you would have to load them from above here the, there's this little triangle icon and uh, what I just did is open the pre-configured uh, the one that I prepared uh, strings and bass loaded it up to here and if we selected another instrument section in addition to strings and brass, let's say for example, the uh, yeah, violins and well, choir. Choir sounds good. The choir, Jesus Christ! You get to have a choir in this entry package, isn't it phenomenal? So if I'm meant to, uh, so now I have strings, brass, and choir, and if I wanted to save that, I go to this. Uh, menu here, say save as, strings, brass, and then enter choir, and save it. it okay, I seem to have done that before. Yeah, well then, overwrite it, and uh, it defaults to the user section and loads from there. So you can load it from here, but you still get to load it from file, open recent, and uh, there it should appear. <laughs> That's my presentation. <laughs> okay. But you get the idea. All right. That's basically all I had to share for, for now with you. Um, play around with it. You can see I'm still new to this as well. I didn't have too much time yet to familiarize myself. But I uh, hope you still got to take something away from it. This is Westbound for Westbound Music. Presenting Orchestral Essentials Package 1. 
there is two packages both at half the price or 60 percent of the price and if you have project sam installed and registered that's that's important you have to register it through native access then you're entitled to an even further discount at half the price so hope this helped have fun uh, enjoy composing and have a nice week bye, -bye.